coming in, you sons of bitches. Look at this. All four reachers are in all four quadrants of all the beautiful goddamn world. Welcome to the Far Reaches broadcast. Proudly brought to you by b and Auto Salvage. That's right, kids. We picked up our first officially endorsed sponsor, not just somebody we made up and say, hey, it'd be cool uh, if they'd sponsor us. They actually have said yes. We love what you guys do. You cover a lot of our area. So B&K Salvage, Bo and the boys over there, have decided to jump on and uh, become a title sponsor of the Far Reaches podcast. So throughout these episodes in the coming months, you'll hear several spots and we're probably talking about them. So uh, real quick, B&K Auto Salvage and Recycling. They have two locations in Eastern Oregon, uh, Highway 203 outside of LaGrand on the way to Union. Drove past it many times myself. Uh, and also in uh, Baker City at uh, 3370 17th Street in Baker City. 40 years plus serving the area of Grand One Valley and surrounding areas. b and Auto Salvage and Recycling with locations in the Grand and Baker City for all your scrap and recycling needs. So welcome to Far Reaches. For the first time in a while, look at Rawls. He's like, yeah, you did the announcer voice. Uh, first time in a while. It's kind of like on, uh, I think, about 10 Cup, you know, he's like sponsored by like Salome, freaking garbage and shit. You know, that's that's exactly where we needed to start was was right there. So um, it's been a while since we had all of us uh, not really in the same location, because if that was the truth, the FBI would be striking that room. But virtually all the reachers <laughs> are here today. We have uh, Mr. Bradbury, myself, Mr. Rawls Balls, and Mr. Joel. Uh, and I've noticed that, Mr. Joel, your background has changed yet again. Uh, I think I'd start with you on the weekly update of uh, can you talk about where you're at? And two, do you know where you are? Yeah. Okay. Uh, last Beginning of last week, I decided to buy a plane ticket and come back to Pendleton. So <laughs> got back on got back on Saturday. I've uh, been well. staying at my mom's this time. Oh, hello, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> One of, of our dedicated listeners, edibles, actually. or did you just go cold turkey? He just uh, he did brought I, them with. Yeah. Did I what? Did, does she ration the edibles, or do you just go cold turkey? <laughs> That's when it goes for a walk. Yeah. So <laughs> I've already had. I've already gotten in trouble once. Uh, <laughs> had a had a pretty good night downtown. Went golfing with uh, oh. with Junior, and then uh, I don't remember ever where we went. It happens. But my mom, uh, she she talked to Brian, and uh, she heard that Brian asked how I was recovering. And she's like, somebody must have saw you downtown and told Brian. I thought there were rumors spreading. So then I asked <laughs> Brian last night, I just, like, who told who told you I was you just take it a out guess. and about? Yeah. He was like, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Talked to him for 15 minutes on the phone, I guess. Oh, that's and, awesome. That's I beautiful. Remember that. That's like the one time uh, we were out and about when I, when I was a member of the country club there. And ran into Winston. I'm like, Winston, you need to join the country club, man. I want to sponsor you because we got like pro shop credit and stuff, you know. He's like, he's like, I don't know if I'd like it. I'm like, you love it. You got to come out. Come out tomorrow. We're playing. He's like, oh, all right. So he catches us like on the seventh hole, you know. And I'm like, hey, Winnie. Uh, Glad you came out, man. He's like, yeah, I'm going to join. I'm like, sweet. He's like, uh, I'm like, well, who's sponsoring you, dude? He goes, uh, uh, you are, Micah. I'm like, outstanding. That was a smart thing for me to do. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one, of those, one of those things. Uh, so it sneaks up on you. Well, congratulations. Glad you're back in P-Town, uh, staying with Janet. Uh, I always give yeah. Joel hell because in his phone, it doesn't say, it doesn't say ma or mom or madre or it's just Janet, you know, so. Obviously, that's, that's what his mom's name is. So, I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah. So, welcome to P Town. Uh, staying for a while or just kind of testing the waters? Yeah, this is open ended. I think uh, <clears throat> starting with a month and then see what it's like. I, 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 I imagine I'll at least stay until after the election, see how much yeah. shit falls apart. Things will calm that. down after the election. Yeah. That's uh, hopefully. That's yeah. what we heard. Yeah. So, we're already hearing that the Rona's not as severe as we thought and the who's saying you know lockdowns are bad so um yeah <laughs> keep up to date so the, the who said that they yeah. said lockdowns are bad sure did 
I miss, I miss, I miss that. that and probably miss the new thing too that masks are bad too. More people are sick with wearing masks than not. So, uh, whoops a daisy. Yeah. So, Mr. Bigsby, just looking elegant and refined and relaxed in your little corner over there. How about uh, a little weekly update there, Home Skillet? Starting to get some cold weather. Oh, pucker up, buttercup. Yeah, some freezing temperatures at night down in the 20s. <clears throat> and uh, we're trailing cows home and going to ship some calves this weekend. So it's kind of a weekly update. Uh, is there a way you can increase your audio output by just a tad? It's a little uh, on the quiet side, and we like to hear your tidbits. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just trailing cows home to ship this weekend. So, um, awesome. Nothing, uh, nothing extraordinary. Like Roger and rainstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fall's coming, full effect, and bringing cows home. Chilly weather. Let's uh, check in the boxes right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. No, it's about getting cold up there. Do you? Are you going to let all the, any of those cool dogs that you guys have come inside? No, no. no. They all stay outside. They're all ready. Do you give, yeah. them a, give them a blanket or something? What do they do? <laughs> they curl up and put yeah. their nose in their ass and sleep well. Oh. Uh, they'll get uh, some straw and, in their dog houses and whatnot. And Ooh, nice. Good R factor. Yeah. If it gets really, really cold, we'll feel sorry for them and bring them in. It's got to get like 30 below. With the wind, yeah. Do you at least like have a garage or something where they can go inside the garage? We got There's plenty of buildings we can get them in out of. Yep. Where, we, where we keep them, that's all undercover. Mm -hmm. so. oh. It's kind of like a three-sided lean-to, isn't it, with a little kennel in it? Yeah. Protected against pavilion winds, uh, they often shift, but for the most part, yeah. There. We, we humans feel awful sorry for animals that are accustomed to that. A lot tougher than we are, so. I say that as my dog's curled up on the couch and are like nine blankets and a pillow. But, hey, it's Florida. <laughs> She's got to do that for cool, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, living in Joseph or living in some 70-year-old woman's purse. Say that again. <laughs> For a dog, I got you now. At first, I was yeah. like talking about your balls. Uh, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> that's where I went. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like my carried, a, dog. <laughs> carried around in a little purse or a, you know, a uh, dog carrier everywhere, like a little, I don't know, quadriplegic yeah. Barbie doll. No. Speaking of these natural animals, you guys see that video of the <clears throat> of the cougar that was going around Facebook? Yeah, she was hot. Oh, that cougar. Uh, that's a different <laughs> one. I, that's a... I'm sure everybody saw it. The guy was like backtracking for like six minutes. Yeah, she, the cougar was slipping in all the fecal material he was leaving on the ground. <laughs> Easy to track. Yes. Yeah, I doing what... that? So, uh, one of you guys probably know what you're supposed to do. Like, wh I was thinking I'd been down and pick up a rock and throw some rocks at it. What would that do? Would that just anger it more? Probably miss. You might fall down. You might attack when you bend down. Uh, yeah. You might miss. I wouldn't miss. Not you. I wouldn't miss because I'm going to double tap that <laughs> bastard. Yeah. The uh, you're supposed My to keen yourself... chest holster. Yeah. You're supposed... Aren't you supposed to make yourself big? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I know a guy that had a cougar stalking him or a mountain lion stalking him on a bike trail. And he picked up his bike and held it over his head and walked backwards for a mile and a half to get to his pickup. And she followed him the entire way. That'll make you poop. Yeah. And that tail, yeah. that tail's like electrified velvet, dude. It's almost mesmerizing. I think it's part of their defense. That sounds Look like a band. <laughs> Rawls, you're being um, unusually quiet. No, I've I've been in a similar situation, and when you shoot one of them at about 15 yards right between the chest, they can jump about 
20 to 25 feet straight in the air and do a flip. They're they're spring loaded. They're not screw with that's for sure. But yeah, I don't know that. I heard that that took place in Utah, and I'm not sure what Utah's laws are, but um, they in Oregon here and maybe maybe Washington. I'm not sure. I know California for sure, but they've outlawed. Hunting them with dogs, which is a way to keep those animals somewhat fearful of humans. And, mm-hmm. um, you're not dealing with your everyday house cat right there. And I don't think a lot of these pilgrims that wander out in the woods really understand that. And they're, yeah, they got uh, paws like you know, they're bigger than my so mitts. Quick and sneaky and agile. And it, after a lot of years of riding around in the forest with cattle and whatnot, I often wonder just how many of them I've ridden by or under. You know, they're they're uh, they're an interesting. They are a hunting machine. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're just they're no different than these wolves. They're just they're born to kill. Yeah. So, yeah. What were we talking about last night? If like a guy, if one of them, a cougar like that, if that cougar, it didn't look that big, but I'm sure it. Would <coughs> oh, it shreds your weight in like point two <laughs> seconds. Yeah. But but ultimately, I think like we could probably fight it off, right? Negative. I mean, it'd do a lot of damage. I'm not say that come out and skate and walk away, but that that particular instance there, you that was a a mother with kittens, and you might as well just try to shave a badger's balls because she's in a trunk of a Buick. Them. Yeah. 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 So it's, I. Uh, I don't think I you're going to fight there. If you if you were, as long as he kept going away from those kittens, he was probably going to be all right. But if he showed any sort of a challenge, she was going to turn it on. Oh, you know, that's my opinion. So maybe throwing rocks would have been a bad idea then. Well, it, it, ultimately, I think he did, and it got her to turn and run. But he, it, as long as he wasn't trying to pursue her, he wasn't going to get in a fight. But, oh. Yeah. What are you saying, Brad Hypothetically, I might have been on a hunt with uh, hounds and a mountain lion. Hypothetically. In the past yeah. two years. Um, and it is all ghosts in the darkness scary. Uh, especially once you – what happened with us is we got them treated a big willow. And uh, there was not many – It was easier for yeah. him to – move around in the willow that it was for the people that were trying to get the cat so it was pretty intimidating but uh yeah it's not it's a totally different experience you could talk about it all you want but i don't think your hair on the back of your neck ever goes down the entire time that you're around the so yeah and yeah anybody that uh says they don't like hunting and that they could over override that primal instinct that you get when you're in that kind of situation I'm pretty much going to call BS on <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I, I, I think the best thing is like the looking big loud backing away because you're probably into their, their zone for some reason like we're all said about kittens or little ones but yeah there's times when you're out walking and you just see big tracks in the snow or I've come across the cougar kill before and it looks like Somebody put a stick of dynamite up a grouse's ass and it just exploded everywhere. It was insane. Yeah. Actually, it was a fawn. It wasn't a grouse, but it was just, it was just like a 30 yard circle of blood and assortments. Yeah. They, uh, it'll make you pee a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why you carry your key and I chest holster because you can, uh, get to it quickly and, uh, that's where the three S's come into play there. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, for those of you playing along at home, that stands for shoot, shovel, and shut the hell up. Or maybe shut your pants. It depends on your response time. <laughs> yeah. Especially with that spring-loaded got that when you, when you clip it. So, uh, Rawls, when you guys trail calcium, about how far is that? It's not too far, is it? But it takes a while. Oh, to, today it was about five miles, and I think tomorrow is a little further. So, nice. Six to eight miles. Not too bad. Not across the road, but takes a little time. Yeah. No, it's it's a couple hours. Yeah. 
They're they're wanting to come home pretty bad this time of year. You know, they know what they know what's going on. Winters are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, what's happened this week? Sold a house, maybe. Oh, but did it, did it, close? Did it, don't it. almost almost it's in contract. So it's okay, so unless something gets haywire, yeah. yeah, yeah, outstanding. That's, that's a big uh, first. Well done, sir. Um, well done. I'm going out to uh, teach at my the one 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 room schoolhouse that I went to until sixth oh, grade. Tomorrow. Outstanding. Don't be late. There's a bunch of uh, what are you, what are you, feral children? Yes, so. feral. <laughs> Remember what you've done. Then all comes back around. So you're be you prepared. The lesson plan consists of take them out and pick up all the trash between the school and the bridge. So good first start. <laughs> How are you? Uh, you framing that as science class or PE or just a day? Environmental studies. Environmental studies. Nice move there. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. They didn't teach that one. In oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Indentured servitude. And we got our, we got our, uh, Airbnb on the market and, uh, had a successful first visit. So that was good. And, uh, Oh, outstanding. The, local, the, lo the locals now know that it's a place that they can put their family. So I uh, agreed to let one of my, the guys that works for us, um, Parents in law stay in the middle of this week, and I had somebody uh, message me right after I did that to wonder if they could stay for 14 days. So, unfortunately, uh, I had to quick. override it for the, the hands, parents in law, and uh, hoping that somebody else will book it again later here in a couple of days. But surprisingly busy, uh, lots of inquiries, and uh, I just think it's a matter of time. I, I had no idea how popular it would be. Yeah, um, like I said, you know, I rented a room in Lincoln, and pretty much most of the time, if I wanted to rent, it was full. And I had, if I forgot to block it off, usually when it really rented. So yeah, uh, it's just surprising yeah. <laughs> where people are looking to stay. Yeah, so. <laughs> but the guy that stayed this time and his uh, partner were rock hunters. No, so they went out. To, towards Denio, Nevada, Denio, Oregon, and Nevada mm -hmm. mine and uh, fire opals. And the other day they went up to the Sunstone area outside of Plush. So that's a pretty good location then. That's kind of a nice uh, middle of middle of the road, so to speak. Yeah. Yep. Outstanding. Anyways, uh, yeah, those are the big things that we got going. Outstanding. Well done, sir. And well done. Cow stuff. Are those, are those rocks valuable or are they just like to be able to look for them? Yes. They're not like diamond yes. valuable, but they're uh, a one with a red tint or a green tint can go up to like six, seven hundred dollars per diamond. Huh. So. Yeah. So, cool. third, you know, worth your time, I suppose. Yeah. My wife has two sunstones. I think, I don't, I think that's just right. I got her a diamond, and she has two sunstones set on either side of the diamond. Oh, a rose between two thorns. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the only other place, the only other place you could get sunstones is somewhere in Australia. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought like Arizona or some other no. uh, arid lake regions would have those. Interesting. Dang it! I didn't want to learn anything at all this week. That's really rude. <laughs> really rude. Yeah. Uh, weekly updates. Let's see. Um, been kind of slow. Just been a lot of work, really. Um, I did upgrade my uh, motorcycle means of transport. That's been pretty fun. It's a new uh, adventure bike, as they're called, BMW. So it's it's like a dirt bike on several doses of dirt rights. So that's been super fun. Tearing down some uh, dirt roads, some mud roads through the river, and etc. Around my region. So kind of reliving my days of Ute. Uh, and, uh, just exploring, ex exploring a lot more of the, uh, the Rita now. So <laughs> Rawls is there dancing with his iPad or something. So, uh, and I got some cool trips planned to like, uh, St. Augustine and the Navy SEAL Museum, which is also 
in Florida. So you going to share Rawls, like a piece of gum? Did you bring enough for everybody? Well, I was going to have some uh, mixed nuts and my wife just to sit and over telling me I can't eat while I'm talking. And I said, well, Richard is. And he just took dinner and I think mixed nuts, uh, a lot of you guys don't know. <laughs> That was the alternative name of this podcast before we came up with our reaches. <laughs> it was going to be mixed nuts. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, St. Augustine is the oldest city in America. You are correct, sir. Yes. There's a cool fort there. Oh, wow. I think it's the 1500s, if I'm not totally mistaken. Yeah. So that's about an hour and a half or two hours from where I currently hunker down uh, right on the coast. So it'll be a nice little jaunt over to that. And then uh, it's about three and a half hours. About two hours from there to go to the uh, Seal Museum. So, be a nice little, uh, pretty nice little Saturday. Maybe, maybe Home Depot. I'm not sure I'll have enough time. So, yeah. <laughs> How are you enjoying uh, Sweet Sweet Freedom? Uh, it's wonderful. Yes, um, the uh, People's Republic of Alachua County, where I live, still some of them do the mask thing. The signs are up, but uh, there's a good majority of us that say. Uh, Fuck you. Ah. And we go about our way. So uh, like the local Win Dixie still has a store up, but I was in there this morning and I'd say about 40% of us were uh, being free and not wearing masks. And the UPS store where I go, there's one lady that works in there that wears a mask and I don't think anybody else does. Um, so, and the restaurant I went to the other day, first I went to this nice little Mexican restaurant downtown. Waitresses weren't wearing masks, the cooks weren't wearing masks, and none of the customers were. So, um, I thought the only restaurants in uh, Florida were Hooters. Uh, it's a subdivision of Hooters. They're, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Hooteros, <laughs> yes, is what it's called. So, <laughs> Cha Cha's. Cha Cha. Barrito. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, um, some places are still clinging on to that. Uh, I had to go to the DMV this morning, and she's like, Can I take your temperature? And I'm like, no and she looked at me real funny i'm like it's none of your goddamn business what my temperature is and she's like i haven't had anybody say no yet and i'm like well <laughs> we just met that's why so uh, yeah and so i nobody behind the, they had like the little glass wall with like the movie theater speaker thing through it. it's not a speaker it's just a grid so they're not wearing masks behind it yeah and so i'm not wearing my mask off i'm like that does no good and there's a little piece of plastic hanging up so it's sort of varied. It's kind of teetering on like if you want to go ahead, but I've not had anybody say like, hey, you dirtbag, put your mask on. So, yeah. Well, the, the big kahuna was there today, huh? Uh, yesterday? I think yesterday. I think. Uh, oh, yesterday. Yeah, I think today was um, Mr. Basement, I think, was in town. So, probably. Literally dozens of people showed up probably for that, I'm guessing. So. Yeah, I was going to say, did you take your bike down to the car rally? No, if I'd have known. I'm not Latino, for one, but I think they wouldn't have cared. But, yeah, they said there's 30,000 cars in the Latino rally for Trump in Miami. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Cool. That's, the, that's the police department's estimates. Yeah. So, um, it's amazing how people don't have anything better to do. Oh, so if it's a bunch of left-wing commie bastards out marching, that's a good proud cause. But if it's people marching for Trump, like they've got nothing better to do. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying both, both groups. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you heard all the violence and shit that erupted too at the – oh, wait, no, you didn't. No, because that doesn't happen. Uh, anyways, yeah. So. <laughs> Instead of a mostly peaceful and protest, and it was Denver. a completely peaceful protest. So, Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Now we got about 30, what, 30 some days left till uh, that cluster is finally, hopefully, beginning to end. So, either way, it's going to be good for real estate. Harumph. Yes. <laughs> Magic cure all for the pandemic and everything else that's ailing us now, too. So, um, with all that said, I want to skip. Well, it's not skipping. I just want to move forward and get to this, what we've been trying to get to for like three or four weeks now. And that is our our uh, far reaches movie of the week which uh like seems like decades ago mr bigsby just kind of off the head suggested uh the american classic blazing saddles like the movie that you cringe when they have it on network tv because it's like five minutes long 
Um, <laughs> because let's be honest, if you haven't seen Blazing Saddles, you're missing out. Um, but it's, uh, oh, what was it? Oh. 1974 Mel Brooks movie. Um, Ross, why did you pick Blazing Saddles? I'm just curious. Well, probably because I'm sick and tired of hearing about all the racial divide and the current status that we're living in in America. And it it kind of goes back to a time. I mean, if you look at 1974 and you weren't too far out of, you know, the, the uh, Martin Luther King era. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, they were able at that point in time to make a satire on the whole concept of racism. And it seems like we've come full circle and maybe people need to kind of step back and look, you know, that it, I don't, for me, I think there was a less racial divide for certain in that era in history than where we are right now and people are taking life too serious it's a way to kind of step back and laugh about it really i think that's the key point is and i i'd probably dare say with exception to the past six to 12 months i think race relations were a little tense then but we're i think we are much better now than we ever have been i think the past month or i mean six months to a year i think it's been stirred back up for more for political cause than anything but yeah 1974 blazing saddles you know so the the rough premise is you know the uh the railroad's going through this town and uh there's this little town of rock ridge and they need a sheriff because they've all been run off and so the evil governor's like i need to give him a sheriff but i really just want that town to drive and blow away and so they decide to send a black sheriff in because you know you can't lose like hey He's cutting edge. He doesn't care if they kill him or not. It's going to be entertaining. And so it's classic Mel Brooks fashion, you know. Um, the sheriff comes riding into town with his Gucci saddlebags, which I thought was just absolutely hilarious. But, you know, <laughs> chaos ensues. Uh, it's one of the, you know, yeah, it is a little racy at times, but it makes fun of everybody. I think that's the great thing about it. It talks about the Irish. It talks about the blacks. <laughs> one of my favorite lines is about the Irish, you know. Um, and it was just poking fun at everybody and at racism and at just people in general. I think that was the great thing about it was like, look, we just take ourselves way too seriously. And so um, let's just laugh a little bit about it. I think, uh, I don't know, Joel, Brad, Richard, you guys, did you get a chance to watch it? I turned oh, yeah, on, I it. <clears throat> fell asleep, but I've seen it a bunch of times before. Good man. I feel like I know what you're talking about. I noticed it was written by Richard Pryor. So I'm assuming that originally he was supposed to be in it. He was, yes. Uh, they actually could not insure him because he had some – they started with him. And uh, there was a particular weekend in, in general. I think they were shooting in Los Angeles area. And I believe he woke up in Cleveland and asked them to give him money <laughs> to get back home with, if I'm not mistaken. I've, I've watched the extra features on the DVD. Um, I think that was a part of it. Um, and they wanted to get somebody else. Who the hell was it? They were double booked, so they got Cleveland Little, who was kind of little known at that time. But Gene Wilder plays the Waco kid. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the cast is amazing. But um, they actually had also done a TV show pilot called Black Bart. And Lou Gossett Jr. played the Black Sheriff. And I think the heavens and stars they did not make that tv show because the pilot was absolutely awful <laughs> it was just terrible <laughs> but uh yeah so you know they're trying to run him out of town to get the land for the railroad of course he teams up with the waco kids gene wilder and you know they just have some uh some damn funny times and some of the moments in that damn movie even when he's riding into town you know um the sheriff's getting nearer. No, confound it. Like, it's, they make fun of the N-word a lot, um, and him, and, um, and the people that do that. I think it's just hilarious. I think it's just a damn funny movie. And some people, I know I, I, I worked with a person when I worked at Department of Ag, and I was going off about it one day. She's like, I got to watch this. And so I brought her the, I think it was the VHS, that maybe DVD I had. 
And um, she couldn't watch it. She was too offended by all the N-word. And I'm like, you need to look past that and just laugh. So she took it back and watched it again and actually kind of found it was funny. But um, I've seen it on network TV and like they cut out like all the N-words, obviously. They cut out the great scene where they're all sitting around the campfire eating beans and farting, you know. And it's like, I don't think you boys have had enough. Like it's just, oh, my God. Yeah. But uh, it slays. Um, I'm glad you picked it, though, Rawls, because I think people tend to shy away from that now, especially these days, uh, where you don't even want to say black, even if you're referring to, like, a color of paint or something, you know. And so I think it just reminds us that we're all people. I think we have a lot in common, and I think we need to learn how to laugh at ourselves again. Um, Just like um, Bill Burr hosted Saturday Night Live this weekend, and his monologue absolutely blew people's head off the top of their shoulders and i couldn't i couldn't be happier yeah it was freaking hilarious <clears throat> but dave, dave sapel's monologue what he does it was the same yes but i think if you notice dave Chappelle is black if i'm not mistaken yes i know but i just think that they both had two of the most controversial oh. uh specials last year yes but one was they were both celebrated, but one was a little bit more celebrated than the other. But well, yeah, um, it was pretty funny. I think that if Pryor had been in that movie, it wouldn't have been shunned as much. I'd agree. I think, I don't think because, you, yeah, I don't think you could shut it down had Pryor and Wilder been in the movie. I think that we'd have be having a much different conversation about it, and it would be held in a more highbrow, artsy. Uh, place. I don't know. I mean, like, hear no evil, see no evil, Silver Street. I mean, they had a series of like six or eight movies, and I would not put them on any of them on the intellectual or hysterical level that I would put Blazing Saddles. But as the canon. Yeah, but even that, um, I don't know. It's it's hard to prove the negative on that, but um, yeah. But my other thought is Slim Pickens is every man, too. He's no such doubt. a vehicle for, yeah, he's like a, he's Sim, Sim Pickens, but you know that he's like, he plays sort of an ass in the movie, but yeah, he's, he's the perfect, uh, what do the Greeks call it? Chorus. I guess Raleigh had to poop or something. He left us for a moment. He'll be back. I think he wanted some of those nuts really bad. So he'll be <laughs> back in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I think he does represent the every man in, in a large way, uh, you know. Damn near lost a four hundred dollar hand cart. You know, like just yeah. one of my favorite lines of all time. You know, because what he focuses on throughout the entire movie is not what the focus of the movie is. Great point. Yeah. Very everything that he's worried about are very everyday mundane things, and the actual gravity of the racial situation never even enters his mind. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. uh. <laughs> Somebody go back and get a shitload of dimes. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's that Quentin Tarantino movie where it's kind of like the western? Uh, oh, um, Faithful Eight. Hateful Eight. Is that where they're on the horsebacks and they got the hoods on their heads and? No, that's Django and Change. Yeah, yeah, that yeah I like it. That's Django. That, yeah. That, that scene reminds me of a kind of blazing saddles scene where oh, they're all upset yeah. about. Yeah, I can't see a damn thing. Hey, man, my <laughs> wife spent all afternoon. Yeah, if you want to make them next time, then you can. You know, that was absolutely. Yeah, I think that was a I huge think we nod can all to the agree that it yeah. was a big effort. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. they could have been done better. better. Screw you guys. Yeah, I think that was a huge head nod to Blazing Saddle. I was Blazing Saddle. I was just talking to a friend about that movie the other day, uh, and he, and he took it as. You know, like, oh, I think they're just using their artist excuse to say the N-word. I'm like, no, I didn't see that way at all. If you look at most people who use that connotation, ended up dead. Um, you know, so I thought it was really interesting. We, Rawls, we were talking about a lot of the crossover between Django Unchained and, and Blazing Saddles and the funny scene in, you know, Django when they're riding up and their horses are wearing the, the hoods and so are they and they're not fitting right and the holes are all wrong, you know. See a goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> Taking that, that moment to have that funny part, I think, is like what some of the best parts of that movie are. It's uh <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
and duck. You know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> all the people in town's last name's Johnson. I think that's freaking hilarious. Like every one of them's last name is Johnson, including Gabby, the old rarer prospector guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> These kids There's here a, got to hear this authentic frontier gibberish, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> the most interesting thing I heard about that movie is there's like a, and maybe it's very common knowledge, but there's a scene where there's like a horse chase and uh, there's like regular modern day people in the shot. And it was like oh, they people ended up big, that were on a tour and they kind of wandered onto the set. In the it was a big fight shot. scene and they, uh, yeah, they ended up in like a, in a musical. Yeah. And then they crash over into the commissary. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Well, they like just kept the, the tourists in the scene. Yeah. Which yes. also is the, uh, grounding it by bringing it into, uh, saying like, this is no different than any other, any of these things that we sort of held sacred. Oh, yeah. And then, like, hey, it's just a movie. Relax. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's just a joke. Relax. Like, Ralphie May says it all the time. Like, it's just a fucking joke. Relax. Like, we've completely lost our sense of humor, I think, to the well, I thought, of I'll society. Admit, like, if only Mel Brooks in the 74 would have done something as meta as... Uh, Having them go to the to the theater to see how the movie ended. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great part. Yeah, get me off this picture. You know, he ends up going to the movie, watches it. He's got his juju bees or whatever, and he's like watching it to see what happens. And they come busting in and chasing him. Like, yeah, that whole breaking that third barrier, what or fourth barrier, whatever it's called, and does it in Spaceballs as well when they're watching the movie and they fast forward to see what happens. You know, I think it's <laughs> hilarious, but. Yeah, I mean, some some people that listen to this probably watch Blazing Saddles and be like, ah, that's a stupid racist movie. Some are going to just die laughing because they watched it when they were little kids. I think the main point of the whole damn thing is, though, like, it's just a movie. We're making fun of how stupid people can be. And you just have to laugh. Like, that's the only option because it's we're not that bad. We just have to laugh about it. I think that's the, that's the main thing. And that's why I'm so glad Rawls brought it up is because, like, we all get something different out of it. There's some of the funniest damn lines ever in that movie. Even when the lady's like reading the letter to the governor, she's like, we, we can't hear you. We, the white guy. And she's like, people are falling over backwards. Stuff. Like, There's all these little funny moments like that just slay me every time I see it, you know? Well, you got to believe he was taking a shot at Westworld too. In the end. Taking a shot at Westworld? Like, yeah, TV show? No, the original movie. I never seen it. When was the original movie? I didn't even know what it was. I think it was 72, 71, 72. Oh, right. yeah. No clue. Yeah. So Yul Berner spills out into all these other, uh, like, there's a uh, medieval world. There's a, uh, there's just all these different worlds, and the Western gunfight spills out into all these other oh. robot worlds. So. Maybe, oh, yeah, absolutely then. Yeah, definitely. Because it's yeah. a couple years afterwards. At first I was like, um, Richard, Westworld was just on HBO or Showtime a while ago. So I think, maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, they might have been. The a, original. Okay. Newer. I had no idea yeah, it was the original. Brilliant. Yeah. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Damn it. That's two things I learned already. This is not going well. Yeah. You want to know who directed Westworld? Well, since you're telling, yes. Michael Creighton, the writer. Get out of Dodge. Really? Was it like seven? Yep. That's outstanding. I had no idea. Yep. But wisely, he uh, turned the reins over to Steven Stilberg to uh, pack the light work and do Jurassic Park. Yes. Thank goodness. Uh, that would have been interesting. Huh. Damn it. I had no idea. I did not want to learn anything. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. It's going to happen. It's just bound to happen. Yeah. So... Rawls, what's your favorite part of um, Blazing Saddles that you can talk about? <laughs> a lot of parts that just remind me of certain people in my life and some of ours. I mean, every time I hear, it's true, it's true. Oh, I it's true, it's true. <laughs> I, 
all of a sudden Carl Peterson comes to mind. I think um, of pot roast at the movies. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're... oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's just a, you, you kind of just go through the movie and things come up and they remind you of scenarios in life where people have just taken a quote out of it and used it oh. in, in something we've done that was just, takes you back in time you know all the time oh prairie shit we'll take the irish you know that's one of my favorite lines of all time you know it's just like (laughs) yeah you're right there's so many of those lines yeah um you know the common clave of the west salt of the earth you know morons you know it's just like (laughs) little bastard shot me in the ass yeah Uh, you know, uh, somebody's gonna go have to go back, have I mean, to go back to a shitload of dimes. Shitload of dimes. Yeah, whenever you're like stuck, or you got to go back because you forgot something, or there's a tree across the road, or like, oh, what did that asshole think of next? Somebody's got to go back and get a shitload of dimes. Yeah, <laughs> we'll work up a number is. six on them, a riding in a town, a whomping and a whooping. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's any one part of it that stands out it's the whole movie kind of because it just goes from one to the next oh it's a constant barrage yeah but the whole main point is like look laugh relax enjoy it you know just it's just a movie you know relax and and then i i'm certain that there's a lot of people that i you know growing up with it you don't you don't really see the for me i don't really see where they're coming from when they take it so seriously because it yes it does have negative connotations towards a lot of different ethnic groups and and, and that, yeah. whatnot. but i i guess you know growing up with that humor you don't you don't look at it that way no yeah i, I just think it's, it's fun it's meant to be it's meant to poke fun at all of our little sacred cows and, and just the fact that people are people. Um, and if we just laugh, we get along a lot better. I think that was Mel Brooks's like whole, whole point is like, just laugh and shut up and move on. I think maybe not, but I, I think that's what really he thought. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm speaking out of line here, but I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that couldn't take something from this movie and find it funny. Something that made you giggle or something that made you laugh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going to piss a lot of people off. But on the other hand, there there's a lot of things that are, you just can't help but double over and belly laugh. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you can't park that horse here. You know, the guy just didn't – Mongo walks up and just knocks the crap out of You know, it's like all those funny movies. Just Mongo alone will make you laugh. I, I know. Yeah. Mongo, like I candy. Get, yeah. I always get a kick out of the scene where he's like, yeah, but I'm left-handed. Oh, I yeah. But I shoot with this hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that part's funny. Yeah. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> we got two Richards now. That's good. Yep. Yep. Uh... Damn it, Brad Burr. There, I think I took care of that. Good. Thanks, Menace. <laughs> like, hey, Richard's requesting to join, but I can see him right there. That's concerning. Yeah. So now bottom line, kids. Yep. Yeah, go watch Blazing Saddles. Hopefully it makes you laugh. If it don't, wait another week, pull a lump of coal out of your ass, and it'll be a diamond, okay? <laughs> just relax. It's just a movie. We can laugh at each other. I think that's what we forgot how to do. Like that, I think that's one reason we all kind of gravitate towards each other, because we can give each other shit and still laugh about it. You know, I think that's one of the great things about it. So, Ross, we're going to move on for the movie. Uh, and... When I read this next advertisement, you can make sure you remember your far reaches word of the week. How does that sound? Got it. Okay, I'll say So, are you in a original West World came out in 1973. <laughs> I was dying to know that. I feel better <laughs> now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Which I had no idea there was a West World movie. I really didn't. That's, uh, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. Yul Brenner is baddest. Badder than the Magnificent Seven? I find that he's, pretty, he, he's the bad guy. He's Did he, cool. Was he bald headed and wearing black too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You got a computer there you're looking at. What's the football score? 
Call us after the advertisement. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have the football game up on my computer. I yeah, have the Richard advertising. Does. I'm going to read. Yeah, Richard, he can only read one screen at a time. Yeah. So, anyways, this week's movie was again brought to you by BK Auto Salvage. That's BKAutoSalvage.com. Area code 541 963, or as I would say, Niner 63 6744. Call day or night. They are always there to answer. Serving Baker, Harney, Grant, Umatilla, Union, and Raleigh. Listen to this. Wallawa County. That's BK Auto Salvage. BKLSalvage.com for all your scrap and salvage needs. Outstanding. So, moving on to our Far Reaches Word of the Week, brought to you by Mr. Bigsby. Ross, what do you got? What are you going to lay on us here, man? Malarkey. Malarkey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a pretty good idea what that is. Uh, yeah. Mr. Joel, concept? Uh, well, it's like, uh, like bull pucky, just somebody Ooh. blowing smoke up your ass. You're gonna, Wasn't you're there gonna... a store? Malark. Malark. There was a store in Pendleton when I was a kid called Malarkey's. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Was so that in gonna... Pendleton or Hepner? Yes. Yes, it was. You're it was countering Pendleton. Malarkey with bull pucky. Bold move, sir. Bold move. Yes. It reminds me of that scene in uh, Super Troopers. One more person says shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's that with all that shit on the wall? Ooh, shenanigans? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'll pistol whip them. Yeah. <laughs> I might have seen Super Troopers a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's crap. It's BS. It's uh, it's uh, shite. Nonsense. Yeah. Yes. Nonsense. I think the def- definition is <clears throat> words that are insincere and that uh, are particularly foolish insincere and particularly foolish in this politically charged season well done sir yes a lot of malarkey yeah malarkey doesn't even have to be false information then it could be real information it's just dumb information yeah excellent point (laughs) sir yeah good information so said in a sarcastic tone well, that's called conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is how we communicate most of the time with each other. Yes. <laughs> Malarkey. Yes. Uh, next to mixed nuts. That was the third alternative name for Far Reaches. Yeah. Malarkey Felix Incorporated. Talk. Yeah. And welcome to Malarkey Talk. Yeah. It almost sounds Irish, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, he's a McLarkey if I ever seen one. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a Biden word for sure. I bet he says it a lot. I'm I'm curious what the the roots of the word go back to because it's Irish. Hey. What's that? I'm curious what the roots are. It probably goes back to some sort of an Irish root. It indeed could be, yeah. I would guess. I would guess, yeah. Malarkey. Maybe, maybe it was a guy named Malarkey. He was just always full of shite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then he moved to Hepner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get about twelve it's pints of Malarkey. Answer. Don't believe a Fargan word. Yeah, I can, I can hear that. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, outstanding word. Sorry, my dog is uh, dreaming on the couch and making weird noises. So just ignore that. Yeah. It was Greek, and it was co-opted by the Irish. Oh, outstanding. What was the Greek root? Um, I need a cricket uh, sound to interject. Gentle, mellow, mild, and it's uh, more local. That sounds, that sounds of Spanish descent. Yes. You said there's more also local? A, uh, there's also a derivative of it that's uh, akin to masturbation. <laughs> Well, okay then. Yeah, this moment of silence brought to you by like guilty. Uh, yeah. So oh, that's another code word for uh, yeah. Hmm. It sends a lot of malarkey in these here parts. Yeah. yeah. Or malarkey laden day, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> Inter- yeah, that, yeah, I a, you malarkeyist? I mean, you up to some malarkeyism? That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I, I, that last part surprised me. I'll be honest with you. Yes. <laughs> now you've learned five things. Damn it, Janet. Quit. 
thought it was only four. Then I learned it was five. That's not even fair either. Yeah. <clears throat> but really, what is learning about mars masturbation learning? <laughs> well, that ship sailed a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, it's really more of a kind of auditing the class at this point. Yeah. So <laughs> sort of a extended insert postdoc. Yes, that's what it would be. Yeah. <laughs> Back you ever sit on your right hand till it goes numb? And, uh, anyways, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's called the stranger, Joel. Just so you know. Yeah. Shoot with this hand, though. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But I malarkey with this one. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rawls. I almost made you spit that back in your mason jar, and I apologize for that. It was just poor time. Would the Dutch yeah. brother be the Dutch brother also be known as a false malarkey? I think it's uh, malarkeyisms. Yeah, or malarkey. What's the plural of malarkey? Yeah, I think that would be two malarkeys for the Dutch rudder. Faux, faux malarkey? Mm, yeah, it might be. Uh... <laughs> Tune in next week, folks, when we diverge even deeper into all things masturbation and malarkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Dutch rudder. I can't believe you brought that. <laughs> Wasn't it on Zach and Mary make a porno is where the Dutch Ritter came from? Is that right? Kevin Smith and Jason Muse. Yeah, yeah. It's not gay, man. See? Yeah. I'm touching mine. You're touching yours. Yeah, it's uh, still concerning. But, uh, wow. Well, you had no idea when you brought up the word malarkey that we would degrade all the way to Dutch Rudder, did you? That uh, just crossed my mind about 10 seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So only us four assholes could take a word and do this with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, I think deep down our English teacher is very proud um, yeah, yeah. that we're actually just speaking out loud, I think, probably. Yeah. Is that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a – oh, I have, to, I have to remember this. I have a phrase for the next uh, word, of the, word of the week. It's going to be more of a phrase. Uh, yeah, I think it's going <laughs> to it's sort of along these lines. Yeah. It's sort of along the end of this conversation, not the beginning. Uh, yeah. God, I got I to gotta write it down somewhere so I don't forget it. Yeah. I guess that would be somewhere along where the Irish co-opted the word from the Greek. So it went from Greek to masturbation, and I won't touch that any further. Uh, that's all up to y'all. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, somebody probably took a world tour, came back, and was like, I just discovered Malarkian. You'll love it. Yeah, it's a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So we've been doing that for years. What are you talking about? Yeah. It'll be uh Oh, Joel, here's the score update for you. Uh Titans uh, hammer the Bills, stay undefeated. Tennessee 42, Buffalo 16. Uh Derrick Henry, two touchdowns. Josh Allen, two touchdowns. Here we go. All as well. Yep. And that yeah, wraps plus. up week five of the NFL, kids. My lucky streak is over. I lost. Well, time to get I some bet, malarkey bet on, on then. Bet on the bills in that one. Mm. Ah, no that bueno. That's why. Yeah. Anyways, so get your malarkey on. Uh, I think I'm going to use the shit out of that word from now on. I like it. More on the uh, masturbatory connotation than anything else. Yeah. So. Oddly enough, uh, that counts towards our next segment also of the uh, intellectual moment of the week. I think that's sort of spurred over into both. <laughs> that's for you, JR. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> oh, to be sure, to be sure. Yeah. Oh, sweet Lord, that hurts. Uh, yeah. So I think that's a great time to uh, kick into the – what we learn segment that's a nice right over the hill just a nice connection yeah no malarkey but uh yeah what have we learned so far guys it's our like three-quarter point to the uh podcast usually sometimes it ends in 50 minutes from here and sometimes we ramble on for another hour 30 just depending on uh where our next couple of segments take us but uh mr joel you look very uh studious and reflecting on an inner basis what have we learned my good sir yeah yeah uh i don't know i well so i flew back uh, to pendleton and i guess i just learned like everyone i think is still pretty concerned with uh traveling and how's the world going to change with no traveling you can still travel and it's fine 
Uh, yeah. Well, I, get, I felt like I needed to just get out of New York. So then one day I just said, I'm going to do it. Why well, I, I can, nothing stop me from doing this and yeah. get on the plane. It's fine. So you, you wore your mask onto the plane. Did you have to eat wear your mask when you're having your peanuts or your soda pop? Uh, I, I mean, if you're doing that, they give you actually the wine service, wine and beer services back. So I had a few nice bottles of wine on there. Um, I think you can take it off. I, I just, I, <clears throat> I usually keep my mask on around people just to make them feel more false sense of comfort. You can go pound sand in it's my not mind. For, not for me. Yeah. So you do you like you yeah, filter it through your mask? You drink so it like fine. a, kind of like a up underneath? Yeah, you do actually do the, the worst possible thing you can do is touch your mask all the time, right? Yeah. But so, but every time I want to take a drink, I t- touch it, take it off and put it back up. So it's actually more dangerous for me, but that's fine. I'll assume that risk. But everybody else feels safer. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay, good. But you're good. sterilizing the entire time. Because you're drinking alcohol, right? Yeah. <laughs> A rough. Indeed, yes. Indeed. Was the fight, flight pretty full? Was it, uh, pa- is there, would they put space between everybody or were you just nuts to butt like always? Well, I definitely tell you, like, <clears throat> since the last time I flew, it's, uh, airports are a lot busier. Um, they were, yeah, like, they were pretty busy. It seemed almost normal. Um, my flight was probably half full because they don't, Delta doesn't fill up the middle seats. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I've not flown in way too long and I'm kind of itching, but. Most meetings what, I do still uh, on the Zoom. So, what is the airport bar situation? <clears throat> still expensive, um, but lawless. Well, I, I think they're all closed. I didn't really notice at JFK. I didn't look. I don't think I had time. But um, in in Pasco and Salt Lake, they're all closed. A matter of evil. That's not right. It was like, oh, do you have like Delta Sky Lounge Pass? Can you go in there? Is it closed? You don't have time? Uh, I think they're still closed too. I had my cousin. She uh, worked in the uh, United one. So you can get into the Sky Lounge still. Whew. Only way to travel. Yeah. Just saying. But she actually like, worked and did it just like open her laptop and then sit there and drink and eat cheese. Yeah, so. that's the whole point. Yeah, but no, she like work worked, and uh, so I don't know what the actual cocktail situation was. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I don't know a lot of you know. I usually do both. Depends on what time of day. No, it doesn't depend on what time of day. I'm in an airport. All rules cease to exist yep. when you go to the airport. Yeah. If you're charging me thirty, well, it doesn't get charged in the Sky Lounge, but you know, yeah, that's just kind of the the great thing about an airport. It's like a lawless wasteland. You know, it doesn't matter. You can sleep on the floor. Uh, you drink any time. Uh, it's all pretty much up to you. Yes, I'll have the farmhouse omelet and a black butte porter. Just what I wanted. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I did a Denver omelet and a yeah, yeah IPA. <laughs> you know, observation from this recent flight, I noticed that I, maybe you guys would agree, but movies are always so much better watching them on the airplane. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think like, it's the oxygen because so I'm always a lot more Hanks, emotional. Tom I... Hanks. You watched what? Yeah, well, that too. But Tom Hanks, the Tom Hanks movie with about Fred Rogers. Have you seen oh, that? No, I have not. Wait. No. No. Oh, it's awesome. You gotta watch it. Cool. I, I, that goes back to my previous statement. I'm always a lot more emotional when I watch a movie on a plane. I don't know what it is. Is it like oxygen or? Oxygen. Have, I think it is, man. Yeah. So. I'd be curious your opinion of the Fred Rogers movie on the ground. Yeah. 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 Probably not as good. Probably Couldn't still like it, but not quite as a emotional upswelling. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. I'm just, that's interesting. It's not just me. So I, I never have asked anybody else like, Hey, do you get emotional when you watch movies on a plane? That's a weird conversation, but I decided to bring it up today for some unknown reason. Yeah. There, there was a really good article about that concept in the Atlantic like a year ago, um, 
Uh, so they had like scientific, it was the oxygen thing. Cool. Hmm. The humidity is also what makes your face itch. What makes your face itch? Your face, you don't know, notice that your face itches more when you fly on a plane. Uh -uh. No. Now I'm going to notice it all the time, though, probably. Is it Congratulations, higher or, or lower humidity? They can't find the right thing with the altitude and the humidity. So, like, you'll notice that you are constantly itching your nose. Hmm. Damn it. Is that six or seven things now? Damn. I don't know, because, like, I don't itch much down here. And I didn't itch much in Oregon, so I'm curious what that humidity range is. But I didn't pay much attention either. So, so. Some funky thing airlines have never been able to solve with their environmental controls. Hmm. Interesting. And it's the most uncomfortable setting when you have to hit your balls. Because there's like somebody sitting there right next to you. You can't really do it effectively. I don't think that has anything to do with the airline. I think that's all you <laughs> more like malarkey. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you got the self-imposed mile high club, I think, Joel. Yeah. Yeah. Just go back to the bathroom and just let her have it, mister. Yeah. Get a little back scratcher maybe or, you know, scrub brush for your back and just, yeah. Or maybe take your mask and run it through like a, you know, one of these. Yeah. Uh, my method's pretty good. You just, you just dig in and, yeah. You, yeah. you pull the blanket up a little bit or just go to town. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, which is worse, sitting on them or scratching them. Yeah, they both have their moments. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've gone down a bad path. <laughs> Just so we can't go any deeper. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Bigsby, what have you learned, my good sir? A lot in this episode. Um, That's a first. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have anything in particular that comes to mind right now. Uh, but Nothing you want to share anyways. Yeah. No, not really. I mean, I'm drawing a blank on what can't, I've learned right now. Can't really blame you there. He's not the best color man in the business for nothing, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what about you and your weird whatever you keep holding up just inside the picture, it looks like a conglomeration of anal beads. I'm not sure what you got going my, on there. It's my uh, hey. phone tripod. It's your Malarkey Incorporated. Oh, I see what it is now. Yeah. Now that you put it that way, but it is black and somewhat beaded and you just kind of kept waving it in the frame and I just yep. didn't know what you're up to. So I'm glad you clarified that. If you're listening to this podcast and just driving down the road, you should probably, when you get a chance, pull over and look at the video version just to see what I'm talking about at about uh, one hour and 14 with Richard's Donna, 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 Donna. Do you call that Black Bart? Is that the name of that thing? Say Bart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, that's a Blazing Saddles reference. So, yeah. Anyways, Richard. Yes. What have you learned, my good sir? I had something really good that I thought about all day, and of course now it's blank. So uh, you learn that you should write these moments down. Yes. Yes, I should. I don't yeah. think we ever prepare ourselves for our conversations. I know because I I make it up different every time. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> there is a lot of malarkey. <laughs> There's a lot of malarkey. All right, guys. Just like last time, what did we learn? It doesn't have to be anything earth shattering. I don't need a new Pythagorean theorem or anything like that. Just, I learned that, yeah, it doesn't have to be that big. I inadvertently learned like five things myself. I probably won't say any of them. Yeah. but uh. I've learned in the last, since our last talk, uh, a lot about water. And we should all be paying a lot more attention to water. It is one of the most limiting factors and something that we rely on the most for life. Yes. So, I concur. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I guess I, uh, everything, so every 
with the new job and everything, I learning something all the time and uh, I'm so far behind that I keep just keep having to learn stuff to catch up. So you think you're in the lead. Yeah. I hear yeah. you. So I hear you. <clears throat> but that's uh that's uh, well, that's what I got. Sorry, mm-hmm. not very exciting. That's it's gonna happen from time to time. We all can't just dazzle razzle, but uh, Yeah. Really yeah. I've learned that my role is to derail everybody else's learning. I'm not sure. <laughs> And you're way ahead of schedule on that, sir. Yes. Uh, literally, I'm like a vacuum of our learning right out. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I got nothing. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I've learned that Joel finally embraces what the hell attitude and just decided to get out of P-Town for a while and just, uh, you know, just embrace it and get the hell out of uh, New York for a while and just do his thing. Yeah. I think we should all do that a bit more often. That's what I've learned. Congratulations to you, Mr. Joel. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. 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 There's so much, uh, I think there, you, you don't do stuff because there's like, you kind of feel like you're not supposed to, I guess. Um, but then if you can, why not? Exactly. My statement to somebody, uh, just last week was, Hey, do what makes you happy and keep things simple. I think that's, uh, it's hard to go wrong. Yeah. I can I can dovetail off of this because I've been I knew talking, it. I can I've been talking to people that have been burnt their houses have burned been burned in these California fires. Yeah. They are done with everything in California. And they are desperate to get out and start living the lives they've always wanted to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they just kept putting up with a little bit at a time. A little bit yeah. at a time. A little yeah. bit at a time. And next thing you know, you're that frog in the boiling pot of water or from pure country, you know, why didn't that chicken just jump off the stage? So, uh, there's your two. I I agree. Yeah. That's funny. You mentioned the dancing chicken. I I get that reference now. I I love that movie and I all I've never understood that story. Oh really? The dancing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Like why didn't that chicken just go somewhere else? And yeah, there you go. So you took your little, chicken tap dancing shoes and you went somewhere else so that's why i was proud of you yeah it's often easier said than done or we just we get to the point where we just can't wait any longer or we, we won't you know so i think uh, we should all practice that a bit more often i think i think some people wait themselves into the grave some people what wait i think they wait themselves into yes. the grave. yeah yeah, uh, I think the word tomorrow is probably the biggest bunch of bullshit we ever invented. I heard this great one from uh, Trevor, the Real Max guy. Yeah. 80% done today is be- better than 100% done never. I'd argue that if I could, but I I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree even I've been 50%. applying. That. I've been applying that a lot lately, and it's a uh, – I'm a fan. Kind of sucks sometimes, but when you get done with it, it feels way better, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I I plow through. That's why I, I don't I don't like when I have to wait on somebody else to get information then so I can complete what I'm trying to do because I want to get it done when my brain's fired on it and and move on. So, yeah, not always easy, but good lessons I think. Yeah, and it's easier said than done. Always, you know. But, uh, you know, no regrets. So, I think. Just saying. Yeah. But uh, we didn't, uh, and on to our final uh, next segment, reader mail. Uh, I don't have anything in particular besides, um, you know, obviously uh, some communication about wanting to be our sponsor. But that's not really reader mail. That's more like a. Hey, congratulations. So I'm sure we got some random texts. I did. Uh, we do have a uh, Facebook page now for Far Reaches. So everybody can go out and check that out. Send out some invites today. Everybody else can uh, share it also. So that helps get us a little more sustainable presence, I think, in the uh, the world of social media. So that'll be developing. We might even do a uh, Instagram. We'll see how excited we get. So, um, yeah, that's that'll that'll keep us going strong. So a little more motivation to do more on the Facebook page. And I polished up the YouTube page a little bit. Also, I had some, I had a meeting I had scheduled today get shuffled till tomorrow. 
I took a bit of that time during the middle of my day and did a little uh, far reach dedication. So uh, for my boss, if you're ever listening, well, you shouldn't listen to the stuff and it'll rot your brain. So um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that'll help us track reader mail. Also, we could point them to the uh, Facebook page for comments and such and gather them up uh, from other places. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from that. So we have, uh, one more advertisement to read, and then we go to the, my favorite segment, the best thing of the week. So, hey, got scrap? Get paid, you sons of bitches. That's right, from grandma's freezer to grandpa's old tractor. Just make sure neither one of them are using it at the time. b and Auto Savage and Scrap, they will buy it. They buy cars, they buy copper, they buy brass, aluminum batteries, old farm equipment, including your grandfather, catalytic converters, and electric motors, basically... If you can think of it and you scrap it, they'll come get it. That's BK Auto Salvage at bkautosalvage.com. Area code 541-963-6744. That's right, BK Auto Salvage for all your Eastern Oregon salvage needs. Thank you to those guys for jumping on board with us. We appreciate their support. Bo and the boys listen to our podcast every week and have some rather intense discussions afterwards, which I think that's what this thing is all about, is about spurring people to talk and converse so we are proud to be their their partners and have them on board uh for all things uh scrap source i like it so we've had what we learned and now for our final segment which i really like because this really sparks a lot of good conversation the best thing of the week by far reaches podcasters all right reachers Ronald, you look pretty anxious to talk let's start with you this time no i was just gonna say if bo's listening uh look me up i've got some business for you you hear that, Bo? Mr. Bigsby. Well, Iowa County, one of the 19 Eastern Oregon counties that you guys cover, he's got some business for you. So already bringing yeah, business to the table. Already paying off. Yeah. yeah. What do you know? Rawls has just been holding out. He knew it was going to happen. So, um, Best thing of the week. Let's see here. Again, oh, not a lot of pressure on everybody. This could be something minor, like I remember to change the toilet paper before I needed it uh, to something very major. Yeah. Is that? Um, That's a sign of growing up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've gotten, of course, it's deer season right now. And went out and did a little deer hunting and I've had the opportunity to just spend some early mornings watching the sunrise and mm, yeah. remind myself of what a pretty place that we live in. Probably been one of the best things. Can't argue that at all. Yeah. Over the last week and a half. A little quiet morning time in the mountains. Sun coming up. Yeah. That's uh that's commercial time right there. Yeah. That's like Rebel Man and a Coors commercial all rolled into one. That's pretty cool. I don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> you could at least agree. Come on, no, just kidding. No. Mr. Joel. Uh kind of alluded to it earlier but i've been having some good luck with uh like sports betting and uh my investments and in one day i had a like so i've been investing since the start of covid just to play around mm -hmm. robin hood you know yeah so this is, today was i keep i've sold so many stocks and then like a week later they take off um but I've been holding this one for a long time because I like the company and it's my biggest position and it went up like 25% one day. And then uh, that night I was out at the uh, uh, Max and I, the machines, the lottery machines were paying out pretty good. So I wanted a bunch of money on that. Sp betting on football. Yeah. So yeah it's been, been fun for that for sure. Everything's turning up Joel. Outstanding. Yeah. I go to the casino here pretty soon. Don't do that. Take pot roast if you go. Yeah. What is the stock? Is it a secret? Yeah. No, it's called a uh, Cloudflare. It's called what? Cloudflare. Uh, okay. The the symbol is net. I don't really know. They do edge computing and like software as a service, cloud mm. services or something. I don't even know what edge computing is, but people are pretty excited about it. So. I bought it. There you go. Yeah. You don't have to know what it does to like it. My rump. Yeah. 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 My, big, my big trade this year was to buy a share of Zoom. And it 
Says, so far, the single share has outperformed all the other stocks. <laughs> there you go. I'd sell it yeah. right before the election. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. No, because I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be here for a long time. I'm quiet, you. I don't want to hear that tripe. That's a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> Tired of it. Tired. Yeah. Uh, best thing of the week for me. Um, it's kind of ties with Joel. It's not, it's a, it's a, it's a really um, sort of superficial, but on Apple TV, Apple plus, whatever you want to call it, there's a three great series uh, with Ewan McGregor, the actor and his buddy, Charlie. Uh, one of them is called the long way around. They ride motorcycles from London all across, you know, Russia, China, Mongolia, Araska fly over. Uh, one's called the long way down. They start like at the tip of Scotland and go to South Africa. And the most recent is Long Way Up when they're riding from the southern tip of South America to Los Angeles. And what kind of brought that home for me is this recent uh, expedition. Uh, they're riding stupid Harley uh, electric bikes, but two of their chase support vehicles are this electric pickup out of, um, I think it's Michigan or Wisconsin. It's called Rivian. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with that pickup. And I think if I was going to give stock advice, I'd say check out what theirs is at right now because um, it's surviving this trip pretty well. Even there's some hiccups. Um, it could be charged by just getting towed or IE if you just coast it off the hill, you know, charge itself also. Uh, and they're pretty sharp looking and they make a pickup in an SUV and it's US made. And so uh, they're kind of prototyping it on this, this journey up through, you know, high altitude and cold and deserts and, the whole shit roof. So I really, really like the first two series uh, with you and his buddy riding, but this one's been interesting because of the electric pickups. And, you know, I, I always give electric cars shit because yeah, they're fun and all, but electricity has to come from somewhere. And it's not like magic, you know? Um, so it's either coming from coal fire or nuclear or probably uh, hydro, but the pickups are really cool. And I think they have pretty good potential. So I would check those out, but that's been an interesting series just to watch those guys go, all across the world and it really sort of sets home again about overall people when it's just us we're pretty happy pretty cool people when you can roll into outer mongolia different parts of russia south africa and everywhere else and just if you're just good people people appreciate that so that that was sort of the thing that really stuck with me is they were all freaked out about traveling to these different foreign countries and when they got there the people were the greatest people ever so two tips Ribby on stock and just go be you and meet people. I think you'd be surprised most of the time. So I just checked on Ruby. They're in a sort of a scandal. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Might get kicked out of Michigan, but they did also send like sell like a gob of uh Rivian vans to Amazon. Oh, okay. I, Makes sense. Yeah. So I'd, I'd still buy um, stock then. Yeah. My best thing of the week was um tomorrow boy is coming home that'll be exciting uh this weekend we did move some cattle it took a grand total of 20 minutes but it was a beautiful day and it rained oh awesome yeah so uh basically it took longer to catch the horses than it did the cattle but have we not catch caught the horses then mm -hmm. taken 14 hours yes <laughs> <laughs> but, order of uh, operations yes outstanding and then I would say the nice thing, the best thing of the week is uh, in our part of the world, the things are just sort of returning to normal and hopefully it'll stay that way until everybody loses their shit after the election. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, just uh, taking a deep breath, enjoying the nice fall seasons and uh, cattle are doing good. A lot of people have come up and congratulated me on how well our calves are doing. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah. So might not go broke this year. Hey, hey. you got that going for you. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag little blessings. Yeah. <laughs> sunset, <laughs> sunset hard hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's awesome though. That's, you know, that's what makes you happy is uh, healthy calves. Yeah. So. Hey, uh, so who's got movie of the week next time? I don't recall. I lost my spreadsheet. So has anybody got one? You or Joel? 
Joel, since you're just getting back to P-Town, I, I will bequeath it to you, my good sir. Cool. Yeah. What was that one that I mentioned uh, a while back? It was uh, – Like in this episode or like weeks ago? Yeah. A couple weeks ago. It's the old movie from like the okay. 70s. Ron Howard movie. What was Howard it? The, Howard the Duck? No. No, the one where they just like cruise down the main – American street. Graffiti. Yeah. Yeah, American Graffiti. Yeah, that one. Outstanding. We well, have to watch it on TNT. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out, yeah, that's an awesome movie. I like, that's great. A lot of great cast. Awesome movies. Your car's uglier than I am. Yeah, I think that's a good one. And, and with that responsibility also comes the Far Reaches Word of the Week. So think about that. Ponder it. Can't be malarkey. We already had that. It could be jerking off or masturbation. But uh, so write that down at some point this week when you think of it. Um, so have that locked in. But yeah, it's because next week we have American Graffiti and Mr. Joel's Mystery Word of the Week. So how's that sound? Why American Graffiti? Uh, well, I I saw it on. I watched it, and then uh, good first time making. Yeah, I thought it'd be a good, uh, good movie of the week. Yeah. That's why I don't, I just watched it because it was like uh, I've always heard of it. I think it probably has a lot of nostalgia value. Um, like I like those old movies that are show you how people are actually living back in the <laughs> different eras. At least how they perceived it. Yeah, that's awesome. I dig it. Yeah, American Graffiti. I think that's that's a good one. Especially since you've already watched it, so you can help lead the conversation. Uh, that, that's a good first start. Uh, seeing the movies were golden. Yeah, so <laughs> not bad. Not bad. And, oh, before we wrap up, anybody else have anything for the uh, the good of the order? Final words of wisdom, thoughts, comments, concerns, questions, ponderings? Nope, just got to get to my dinner. Well, wow. mom's cooking me dinner, and I usually drink my dinner. Yeah, baking a whole <laughs> damn plate of it. Yeah, so Grump, grumpy, grumpy old man. That's correct. Good. Yes, good job, good job. So, well, with that, we will let uh, we will wrap up for this week. We can't thank everybody enough. Remember to go check out the new Far Reaches Facebook page. Just uh, type in at Far Reaches or Far Reaches Podcast on Facebook. That should pop up. Be sure to visit and thank our new sponsor, BNK Auto Salvage at bnkautosalvage.com. Mr. Bo Boston and the boys. Uh, our movie next week will be American Graffiti. Word of the week to be determined. That's part of the mystery. You got to come back and find out. Again, if you have uh, financial or love line advice, drop us a line. We'll be sure to get it worked into the answer. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and share and talk about our podcast with your friend. It's on YouTube as well. Until then, uh, these are the four far reachers reaching out and saying howdy. And we'll, uh, we'll see y'all soon. Thank you much for uh, coming along for the ride. Until next time.